Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's DevSecOps Bunch webinar. This is our August session, and we have a great guest, Akshay Agarwal from Qualitest. Today, we're going to be talking about mobile app quality and pipeline performance. They're not an oxymoron. As we frequently do in our monthly webinar series, we'll wait about 30 seconds or so to give everybody a chance to join. We're particularly excited about today's session because both uh, Akshay and I have been working in the marketplace with organizations really helping them to find strategies for shift left, but also implementation and services, uh, leveraging automation technology, training, tooling, and all the rest to really help organizations up their game. And so we'll get started here in just a second, but we're excited about today's topic. And with that, here we go. So today's DevSecOps Bunch, mobile app quality and pipeline performance, not an oxymoron. A couple of housekeeping things for you. Today's webinar is being recorded, so you will get a copy of the recording and a copy of the slides a few days after the session completes. Our Q&A box is open. Please use the Q&A tab to ask questions as we go, and Akshay and I will answer those questions at the end. Any questions we don't get to, we will circle back and answer with you online. We will follow up with you after the event to see if you need additional information. And today's session ends with some really great resources that you can use to continue your learning journey when it comes to mobile application security. So uh, with that, uh, Akshay, could you introduce yourself a little bit to the audience we have today? Sure. Thank you, Brian. And good morning, everyone. My name is Akshay Agarwal. I work as Senior Manager Security Engineering at Qualitest. Well, I've been in this industry for a little over a decade now. And in my current role, I'm responsible for the solutioning and uh, delivery of security penetration test engagements, DevSecOps engagements, risk assessments, BCPDR audits for our customers across the globe. I'm also a cybersecurity evangelist and I love to talk about you know, all things security. And I'm really excited today to share my learnings from the world of mobile DevSecOps. Well, thanks so, so much for, for joining us today. Uh, I'm Brian Reed, the Chief Mobility Officer here is Now Secure. I'm also your moderator and host for our monthly DevSecOps Bunch series that we're now in our second year. Uh, I've been doing mobile since the days of BlackBerry. So that was the original mobile security platform. Clearly that's evolved and, and become dominated with, with iOS and Android. I spend my time uh, working with organizations on developing strategies. I work with the standards bodies and communities. I also help guide our evangelism team here as well, much as Akshay does within his group. And so I'll be one of our primary conversationalists today in our journey around uh, mobile DevSecOps and quality and performance. A little bit about NowSecure, and then we'll talk a little bit about Qualitex. So uh, for those who are new to NowSecure, we've been in the business since the birth of the modern iPhone and Android devices. We started as a mobile forensics company and have now evolved to a full portfolio suite. We're the recognized industry expert when it comes to mobile application security. We've got a world-class research team. If you're into reversing, you may know Frida and Radari. We work with standards bodies like OWASP on the mobile project, and there's some major evolution going on there, some of which I will hit on today. And we work with all the DevSecOps toolchain vendors because we integrate in that world. And so today we'll talk more about um, those integrations. Uh, as part of our customer base, we work with organizations of all sizes. Uh, we largely work in regulated and consumer businesses. So whether you're in financial services or in healthcare, whether you're in high tech, uh, you know, the Googles and Microsofts of the world. Uh, we work with and partner with along with IBM, whether you're in um, uh, healthcare, whether you're in consumer goods, retail, power, energy, transportation, and federal agencies, uh, we are here to help you. What's great about our customer base is all of them view mobile as mission critical to their business. And we're able to help them with the security and privacy requirements they need to be successful with their mobile portfolio. So why don't you tell us about Qualitest? Yeah. So for the uninitiated, uh, Qualitest was founded in uh, 1997, and it has grown into the world's leading AI-powered quality engineering company. Qualitest, you know, it started in Israel as a group of friends with a vision and passion for test automation, and it is now operating on four continents in 10 countries and with more than 6,000 people, among which 40% are women. Well, Qualitest undertakes to be the most trusted and modern quality engineering partner for our clients through superior quality engineering offerings and uh, improved business assurance through services that would include uh, assessment, strategy development, project management, change management, learning management. You know, it also includes services like AI and data science, digital engineering, and user experience. We have, in fact, a dedicated enterprise practice that provides assurance of large-scale commercial packages 
for uh, you know uh, Microsoft Azure Workday Service now, Oracle, SAP, and many more. And uh, could we move to the next slide, Brian? I'll talk a little bit about our customers. So, you know, we have more than two decades of uh, delivering quality IT engineering services across industries, delivery methodologies and technologies. So, and we work with some of the biggest names in the world, including the, you know, biggies from BFSI, such as RBS, Discover, BCU, you know, from telecom, we work with Huawei, Virgin, uh, healthcare, you know, and life sciences, we have Johnson's and Johnson's, um, retail, Adidas, and, you know, some of the technology behemoths like, Microsoft, Google, Adobe, and we also have, you know, customers from utility and uh, energy and utility sector like Excellence and so on. Moving on. So we're going to move on into kind of what's the state of the world today. And every month we kind of talk about different angles of what's going on in the market and, and what those uh, technology or business issues are. And then we steer into uh, this month's topic. And so I'll get started with some of our benchmark data. Some of you may have seen this before. What's really phenomenal now is that mobile dominates all digital time and traffic on the internet, according to Comcast data, right? So 70% or more of all internet traffic now is on mobile. I actually heard 80% yesterday. I was at a, a federal event here in Washington, DC, and the head of security at the FBI was talking about how they've picked up traffic patterns are exceeding 80% now. But the challenge we have is looking at what's going on in the app stores from a quality and, and security perspective is 85% of the millions of apps in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store have security risks. We continuously analyze the app stores and benchmark against the OS top 10 and now the MASBS, and that data is pretty stark, right? So there's really only 15% of applications that we would consider safe for use, which is not great. And the software supply chain is a key reason. For most mobile apps, about half the code is internally developed and half is third-party code. I think we all know supply chain attacks are continuing to grow. So what, what's going on in the DevSecOps side of the house, Akshay? So mobile risk is pervasive, as you said, it, Brian, you know, and the vast uh, majority of mobile apps are very easy to compromise because first, you know, they lack the basic security features or, you know, security is implemented superficially and thus it becomes easy to bypass using freely available tools and uh, and using basic reverse engineering techniques. And, uh, you know, and in order to uh, break this cycle of poor app security, mobile app security must be automated, must be rapid, it must be continuous, it must be iterative. So, you know, in other words, uh, mobile application security needs to evolve to fit the way that developers build apps and not the other way around. And, uh, you know, DevOps, uh, you know, as a culture, it brought a lot of innovation to software development. However, security was often not able to keep up with the new speed at which code was being produced and released. And although, you know, I mean, you have some of the stats right in front of you, although 90% of organizations are in some phases of the journey towards DevSecOps, but only 30% of these organizations are implementing DevSecOps. And even lesser, 24% of organizations are in the planning phase and, you know, 18% of organization are designing and still refining their DevSecOps strategy. So it's not that the mobile app developers aren't implementing any security measures, but some of them are trying, of course, but the state of mobile app security is still not strong. And uh, security paired in the process through automation is the way forward. Now, next slide. Now, I can understand why uh, some people may fear the adoption of DevSecOps, you know, even as IT organizations uh, begin embracing agile dev uh, development practices over the last decade, many still continue to approach security issues in the same incremental siloed way that they had with Waterfall. And yet, with its heavy reliance on uh, legacy processes and manual controls, security remained a big challenge. In many DevOps pipelines, security is still treated as a bolt-on rather than a design feature. For example, penetration testing, you know, which sits on the very right of the DevOps pipeline. Now, this can create uh, pipeline bottlenecks in part because few developers and system operators have cyber expertise and even fewer cyber specialists possess a deep understanding of uh, development and operations. And as a result, DevOps teams and cyber specialists continue to work separately within the pipeline, often slowing down progress, affecting the speed and velocity at which our software, you know, gets delivered. So DevSecOps, you know, as you would understand it, it's not a security trend in and of itself. It's rather an extension of the ongoing DevOps trend. And uh, the true promise of DevSecOps is about built-in rapid mobile application security delivered as a, as a fundamental part 
of an agile release process where security is baked into the process at each and every phase of the life cycle and where security features or the security model can be delivered and evolved automatically and dynamically. So over to you, Brian. And so let's think about sort of the building blocks, right? So we know there's inefficiencies. Uh, we know there's multiple places where we could be improving performance by applying some best practices. And that gets us into this really interesting balancing act. So, um, you know, I have a history from application development, and I actually ran a QA team and built an entire QA tooling system and infrastructure. And when I was working there and then getting into security, I noticed these patterns, right, which is you have development speed versus quality. And it's like a, a teeter-totter or a seesaw, right? So um, you wind up with the conflict of what do I optimize for? How do I balance on this pivot in the middle? For most organizations, development speed dominates quality and security. That's why a lot of organizations can have high defect escape rates. That's because, you know, in the scrum going on at the end, when you're going through your backlog, you're deciding, yeah, we're not going to fix this. We're not going to fix that. We're not going to fix this because we got to get it out, right? And often getting it out, which is your development speed, can trump that. In some organizations that are very highly regulated, government, we found this, for example, in, in some types of uh, uh, insurance companies, for example, quality and security dominate, and it takes forever to get anything done because they're going for perfect security. Uh, again, the federal event I was at yesterday, where we were talking about this notion of sometimes you go through three release cycles before you can get production quality uh, ATO, which is what the U.S. federal government calls that authority to operate in order to deploy. And so we need to be innovating and serving our customers, but we can't be slowing down so much and over rotating on the perfect quality or the perfect security to the point where you never get anything out and you're never serving your customer. And so the world's trying to find this delicate balance. And I think we found it, Akshay. I'll hand it back to you. Sure. You know, I mean, I've had these interesting conversations with these new project managers, developers, and, you know, whenever we meet with a new customer uh, who are in the dire need of uh, mobile DevSecOps or DevSecOps in general, uh, you know, uh, so basically their fear is that a move to DevSecOps may seem like a loss of co control to project managers, developers, QA, security teams who are used to working on, again, you know, development projects following the traditional waterfalls of software development methodologies. So again, you know, I mean, the, as you said, you know, we have we found that right balance, the mobile DevSecOps strategy. And, you know, if both the security and development teams have, again, what's best for the business mindset, then they are in, uh, more likely to be in sync during the development and vulnerability testing process. And, uh, you know, rightly said, uh, DevSecOps is not just about speed and speed only. Improving software velocity is just one aspect, but automation helps speed deployments while improving software quality and compliance at the same time. So it acts as a great leveler between development speed and quality and security. Absolutely. And so I'll, uh, as, as we think about one of the cornerstones of the conversation we're going to have today is this idea of growing a learning organization, right? I actually talked about automation as a great leveler, right? And having your teams be informed and understand how to run faster and leverage automation and tools to do it. A big part of this whole trend around shift left is actually getting in the mind of the developer. So a lot of you may be security practitioners here today. Some of you may be development leaders. Think about how they come together because development is really the engine that's driving the machine and how we can shift strategy, shift security into the mind of that developer and those development teams in order to get them to run faster. So we're gonna get started on practical set of how to's. So I'm gonna have Akshay get started around the security strategy here in a second. And we're gonna do this wrapped around a common software pipeline. As we do every month, we bring out this pipeline diagram to kind of talk about what's a typical pipeline look like, right? And so you're gonna have a diagram, you're gonna have a process like this in your organization. If you have many development teams and many pipelines, it might look slightly different depending on the team and the kind of uh, applications that they're building, but there's a lot of commonality to uh, how this all runs. And so we're gonna look at it from the upfront standardization requirements through code and testing, through staging deployment and into production. We want to understand what are the right strategies to be applying into this in order to bring that balance of development speed and security quality in. So I'll hand it over to you. Sure. So, you know, uh, 
as we said, right, the security has to be baked into the very DNA of your, uh, you know, SDLC. So the the way you can automate mobile app security is so right from the developer trying to write secure code to the pre-build and post-build activities to the deployment stage, followed by all the data moving into the vulnerability management phase. You know, you can have uh, pre-commit hooks and ID plugins at the very start of the process, which would help you identify those basic security bugs avoid accidental git commits involving sensitive information leak such as the access keys ssh keys uh, you know your username and passwords there have been uh, uh, one too many cases of developers accidentally committing aws access keys or you know pushing credentials in the publicly accessible git repositories which of course later go got abused uh, you know in larger security breaches so ID plugins, for instance, uh, the idea is not to discover all bugs, but rather help the developers write secure code. And uh, once you're through the build stage, you can then perform SAST. I mean, these are for your uh, SAST stands for uh, static application security testing. I mean, it, it is for your easy wins, you know, typically for your low hanging fruits. And I understand that, you know, the, the SAST scanners out there, they report, uh, uh, you know, a lot of false positives. So you have to train them, right? You need to build in the right context. You have to optimize the tools with at least four to five iterations. So don't just use multiple tools, you know, for the heck of uh, gaining that wide coverage. Train one tool. Software composition analysis, again, you know, it performs checks to identify vulnerable outdated third-party libraries. You can then perform, uh, you know, DAST once your app is deployed to staging for QA and once you're uh, uh, through the production setup stage, you can go for infrastructure scans and compliance scans using security in uh, infrastructure as code and compliance as code. So, you know, and uh, about security and infrastructure as code. So if you're, uh, if you're already using DevOps, I'm assuming you already have... Uh, infrastructure as a code. So what this really means is that uh, you, you don't really have to spin up a VM or start Ubuntu by hand. What this really means is uh, that, you know, you have scripts available which uh, set up uh, your environment in just one shot. And since it's available as code, uh, you can spot bugs just by looking at the code. And since, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, it, it also allows you to perform audit on the infrastructure. And uh, let's not forget, you know, since it's the age of containerization and you're using Docker and Kubernetes, the containerized environments, uh, the bugs associated with these environments are often found in the base images. So multiple images available on Docker Hub have multiple CVs open, right? So DevSecOps, again, I mean, if you can move to the next slide, Brian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as we said, you know, right from the developers trying to write secure code to your pre-build, post-build activities, you know, you have in your, uh, you know, once you're writing the code, you can perform activities like SAS and SCA. Then comes your CI pipeline, uh, you know, whereby you can perform SAS and SCA. And then you have production wherein you can perform dynamic application security testing. You can perform pen testing of the production ready builds. And uh, if you can move to the next slide, uh, DevSecOps, you know, is really heavy on automation which in turn means that it is uh, heavily reliant on tools making your entire vulnerability management process rather convenient and effective. So, you know, you must see on your screens uh, a bunch of tools that, and this slide is not an endorsement for any of these tools, and there's a plethora of open source and commercial tools out there. You may want to pick and choose the ones that would work the best in your respective environment. But, you know, these are the ones that we typically work with, and but there are many. So, you know, you can implement uh, DevSecOps in product development lifecycle. You know, you have uh, you have threat modeling tools, uh, you know, OS Thread, uh, OS Thread Dragon, you have Microsoft Thread Modeling Tool, you have pre-commit hooks tool, OS Dependency Checker, you know, clearly defined. Uh, you have SCA tools. Again, I mean, it's, it's a mixed bag, some commercial, some open source tools. It, it has SaaS tools, it has vulnerability management tools. You know, you can integrate uh, your Jira with GitHub. You can integrate Jira with Jenkins. You can, uh, you know, integrate Jenkins with Sonar Cube. I mean, if you have a Jenkins pipeline, uh, you know, you have uh, integrate Jenkins with Docker. You can implement build notifications on emails and Slack. You can integrate Jenkins with email and Slack. So there's a there's a plethora of activities that you can perhaps do by automating uh, mobile DevSecOps. What do you think, Brian? So I think as we as we work through all of these different tools, it really does kind of take a village of both the team and the tooling 
to get there because as we grow the quality of our applications, we grow the security and frankly, the functional testing, you wind up bringing in a lot of tooling in the pipeline in order to make that all happen. Now you guys have a full suite that you can bring to bear, right? To help customers with this. That's right. So, you know, as we said, uh, we're not just a cybersecurity team, we are a cybersecurity CEO and we possess rich expertise in secure testing of enterprise applications catering to diversified business needs. So again, you know, from retail to e-commerce, e-learning to education, BFSI to healthcare, uh, we have been providing best of class secure testing services to our customers across geographies, different industry verticals and organization sizes. And uh, our service offerings could easily be split into three categories, catering to uh, awaiting industry demands. So cyber consultancy, uh, vulnerability testing and assessment as the second category. And uh, lastly, we have security engineering. And uh, so Polytest, you know, in order to deliver the uh, the, the quality, uh, you know, I mean, we, we stand for quality. So to provide mobile DevSecOps or even Dev or web DevSecOps. You know, we have uh, we adopt the latest industry standards and testing methodologies to help reach the goals set by our customers. Our, in fact, our mobile application security testing, we have built a framework that borrows heavily from uh, OAS mobile application security testing guide and uh, mobile application security verification standards. In fact, you know, I mean, all the mobile OAS tech top 10. And uh, you know, so and we have integrated our testing processes with industry best practices such as OWASP, PPES, SANS 25, OSSTMM, uh, uh, NIST standards, and uh, of course, you know, we are, we are powered by a strong strategic partnership with uh, partners like uh, uh, Now Secure, uh, right? Uh, uh, whom we leverage for our mobile application security testing requirements. You know, uh, so and, and it's a great platform for which we also use in some of our existing engagements where, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's more like a plug and play service that perhaps you just need to give your IPAs and APKs and you get a fully automated suite of testing process. So I let uh, Brian talk more about now secure products and options around mobile desktop ops. But yes, of course, you know, uh, I can talk about a shift left, shift down approach and our approaches are uh, uh, quite simple, you know, we want our customers to treat uh, security just like any other bug, right? So our, our approach is to shift cybersecurity left and shift down the responsibilities. And in this effort, we help them integrate uh, security testing during the full development lifecycle from uh, design to production and in complete sync with our clients' processes and technology stack. So, you know, we are, in a way, we are spearheading a paradigm shift where you know, the security testing is now being done by testing experts as part of the testing task and processes rather than the security experts in late release phases. Uh, security issues, you know, as I said, must be treated as quality issues if, so, so that you know, if they are not prevented, they are at least detected early and fixed as soon as possible. And early detection means early and continuous testing and validation. That means uh, security tools must be given to the developers. And those must become the developer tools. So you know, so you know that would ensure early detection of security issues, and that would mean uh, that would entail analyzing the code for issues uh, from the moment it is written to after it is deployed. So we uh, we encourage security into development and testing phases, making security vulnerabilities be treated like any other bug. So you know what we do is for our uh, manual, uh, you know, if, if our customers have the manual uh, orientated environments. We deploy people. These are cyber quality testers, you know, as part of uh, broader QA teams. And these uh, cyber quality testers are uh, testing experts who focus on testing security-related aspect of the system. Whereas, you know, for our customers who have uh, rapid development environments, we address the three major components required for the true integration of security into the SDLC, and that is people, process, and technology to offer our clients an end-to-end -end solution, be it SaaS, DAS, IST as a service, compliance as a service, uh, a vulnerability management as a service, all into one. And uh, you know this paradigm shift, it allows security to, uh, again, enjoy a consistent, reliable, and scalable test testing framework with uh, higher coverage and a streamlined process by, of course, assigning the right skill set for the task. So shift cybersecurity left and shift down the responsibility is our approach. And I think we're, we've seen that be very successful in, in our customers and our mutual customers as a strategy. And as we think about it, 
you know, kind of tying that together, I want to remind folks that we'll take questions at the end. So please use the Q&A tab um, for any questions or comments on what you've seen so far here. So when we when we think about, you know, taking a step back and just looking at the overall goal here, security is a function of quality. Quality is how good are the things I'm building? How successful are my users in using it? What's the quality of their experience? What's the quality of the functionality? Does it meet the financial needs of the business? And is it secure and respect privacy rules, uh, privacy expectations of your users? And so in my many years of doing QA before I got into security, you know, there's, there's a core set of components that really development engineers and QA teams follow when they think about driving quality and then trying to drive quality at scale with speed, right? So you wanna have an established set of standards of what, how do you define quality in your organization? What are your best practices? What is, for example, the SLAs of what you fix? Which areas of quality do you focus the most on because you can't be perfect in all things? Uh, what's your P1, P2, P3 prioritization? Do you have skills to write good code, right? We try to hire smart developers. We all do as development team leaders. Uh, how good is the code they write? And what can you do to help them improve the quality of the code that they write and make sure the code that they're using like third-party code is quality too. You have your requirements that are the new things coming in from like your product management or your business side of the house. And you got the backlog of tickets, bug fixes, um, uh, 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 um, uh, infrastructure modernization and other things like that. Sorry, a little brain melt there. And then finally, to, to prove quality, you're going to do testing and remediation. So you have a QA team or automation scripts in your pipeline. They're going to do testing and, and guide your developers towards remediating things that they fix. And then you do a retest. And all of this slicing across has this notion of metrics and continuous improvement. So if this were a pure quality conversation and we were talking about quality in the pipeline, this is where we would go. Now, stepping into security, security maps in the same way. Security is a function of quality. And so that means you should have standards like using security standards like OWASP to define what do I mean by security? How do I properly threat model? How do I define a secure architecture? And how do I test and, and remediate that? Do I have the right training? Because most developers don't get security training in any way, shape, or form. Do I have security requirements going into the ticketing system? Do I have someone in the organization specifying how to handle the PII or protect the IP of the app, not just what is the cool IP I'm gonna build in the app. And then you should have automated security testing in the pipe and all of this should be underlined with not just your regular metrics and continuous improvement, but slices of security metrics where you're driving continuous improvement. And when organizations flip it and not say security is something at the end and security is, is its own thing, thinking about vulnerabilities, instead says security is part of quality and then attach security to my quality processes, then you get much better outcomes. Everyone's on the same page. Everyone's able to move from where they were to where you need them to go. Now, to make this all happen, as actually said before, you have to have automation in order to get there. The manual world is error prone. The manual world doesn't work 24 hours a day. The manual world doesn't work with all tools. And so if you have automation, you get speed, consistency, and everything else. So it's just kind of this one-two punch of recognizing security as a function of quality and then deploy automation as a function of quality. And that's really where you get to the scale and that breakout quality and speed. So what I'd like to do is kind of dive into a blueprint. There's kind of like a, a five-part blueprint of how to actually do this in the real world. And we have numerous customers who are using this blueprint in their organization. So we're gonna go back to the standard pipeline that we know and love. We've got all kinds of tools in the core, CI, CD, infrastructure, code repository, vulnerability management and orchestration. We've got our development tools like Xcode and Android Studio. And for most of us, we're producing mobile apps that go into commercial app stores. You have the considerations of what do Apple and Google want when we're trying to get something out the door. So going back to our quality best practices, the first thing is establish standards and policy. So we find that best-in-class organizations bring the stakeholders together to define what do security and privacy mean for how the pipeline is going to run, the architectural requirements, the best practices team, the SLA it's going to run. And so leverage industry standards like the OWASP MASVS is really your core to get there. There are a lot of organizations that think of OWASP and OWASP uh, MASVS or ASVS, if you're in the web world, as being for security teams. They're not. They're actually for development teams, too. If you actually read the MASVS, you'll find there's entire chapters that teach developers and architects how to design and write code in a secure way. Now, to make this all happen, you could trust on the human manual and get them together and coach them and everything else, and you should certainly do that, but deploy a policy engine for automated controls in the pipeline. 
Uh, NASCAR is going to be announcing very soon the world's first automated policy engine that allows the pipeline to run autonomously based on policies defined up front by all these stakeholders. And then everything through the pipeline just follows the policy, which is a great level uh, of automation. So moving next, right, we talked in quality about training. Well, let's make sure there's some basic security training in place for developers. Uh, we built something called Now Secure Academy as the result of research work we did with the U.S. Air Force and some of our other larger customers. A simple two hours worth of training lowered the security bugs created by developers by more than 30 percent. Just two hours, four little 30 minute segments. There's some basic fundamentals that most developers don't know. And if you teach them that little bit, including which APIs to use for storage, for crypto, for network, boom, you're off and running. You get quality better right out of the gate. Now you can leverage the OSBEM ASVS resources, other third party resources in that learning, but make sure you have the information in there. But the other thing to think about is the best time to train is when there is an issue they're trying to fix. So make sure there's some sort of continuous learning embedded in your remediation tickets or available to call upon. What do people do? They go to Stack Overflow or they Google on how do I fix this yada, yada, yada bug. Well, why not in the remediation ticket have a little micro learning pod or links to Apple and Google documentation so you can actually go learn how to fix it in the right way and learn how to use that API or that piece of code in the right way. So I wanna set my standards and automate my policy. I wanna do some training proactively and reactively to the issue tickets, then I need to do the automated testing. So uh, leveraging a full battery of automated tests, there were a lot of tools that, that actually showed before, now secure is one of them. You want those tests to be testing for sensitive data. You want them to test for app store blockers. You don't want your app to have problems with Google submission or Apple submission. You want to make sure you're monitoring for regulatory compliance where necessary, and then make sure you're automatically feeding tickets back to the developer. The automated testing will find issues faster. The embedded remediation will fix issues faster. So you get this yin and yang of the pipeline starts to speed up and quality starts to go up if you're generating a highly accurate handful of tickets with remediation guides and micro learning in them, then you get that velocity that you want your team to have to really groom the quality in. And this running autonomously is really a key part of getting to scale, is let the systems do the work for you. Now, we realize that there are applications that are high risk, complex use cases have things like um, multi-factor authentication and CAPTCHA might be communicating with IoT devices and sensors and things like that. So what this strategy, this blueprint does is you can automate 80 or 90% of the testing and then do some manual testing for the handful of things that you can't automate physically. You could do the manual testing for multi-factor auth or the interaction with a Bluetooth device or something else like that. Now Secure is about to announce a new innovation that actually brings together 100% automation with guided testing from a security analyst. Imagine a world where you're doing automated testing every day, and once in a while, an analyst will drop in and do a step or two within your automated test to make sure you get a piece of coverage that traditionally has not been automatable. So we found a way to put man in the machine with this guided testing capability that brings together the deeper nature of pen testing with its broader coverage and the full automation world. So you're going to hear more about that coming out next month with this guided testing innovation. So yes, automate everything you can. Yes, it's not possible to automate everything. So leverage guided testing or pen testing to get over the hump of those uh, special things. So when you put it all together, there's basically a set of steps here that really can help you drive quality in the pipeline. Establish policy, deploy policy through an engine, do the training, do automated security scanning, do ticket remediation with instructions, do periodic guided and pen testing, monitor the apps in production, and when you actually do this, when we look at our customers from our customer case studies and uh, our customer reported results, generally organizations get 30% or more faster release cycles and 30% or more better quality, i.e. risk reduction. The number of security vulnerabilities and escape defects goes down, the quality goes up, and they meet the delivery needs of the business by bringing this multi-step process into real life within their organization. So we're going to pull together a summary here in a second. I'm going to remind you to please use the Q&A to go ahead and set up for some questions. So Now Secure does have a full suite of solutions. We are your one-stop shop for uh, your organization and what you may need to do from a mobile application security perspective, automated testing, supply chain, uh, pen testing tools like Workstation, Academy, our free training, 
pen testing services with guided testing and even our mobile verse, which is an online community to learn more about mobile. So we look forward to talking with you about that should you need that in your organization. So before I get to Q&A, we wanna pull this all together. We've got a summary for you here and some resources. So uh, actually get us going on kind of how you see this all coming together in summary. Well, you know, it's, it's a great partnership between Qualitas and Now Secure, where, wherein, you know, we bring the, you know, the, the broader uh, uh, QA and QE expertise, and then, you know, we get to leverage platforms like Now Secure Automated Mobile Application Security Platforms, where, you know, it's, it's, it's a coming together of, you know, two very strong uh, entities in terms of, and they bring very different skill sets, and, you know, those two cobbled together uh, brings great value to our customers. So, you know, I mean, if, if, it's a, if it's about DevSecOps or even mobile DevSecOps, right? So Qualitest and uh, Now Secure together, they enable uh, security. And, you know, I mean, uh, we are spearheading, as I said, you know, we, we try to uh, articulate that uh, during the webinar also that, you know, how we are spearheading that shift left and shift down responsibility. And uh, Now Secure, uh, you know, scores bang on on that front wherein you get end-to-end -end mobile application security testing, you know, right from the developer, you know, you just, as I said, I mean, it's it's a it's a completely automated uh, mobile application security test suite. So it's 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 a great partnership I see and and I and I only see it uh, growing from here, Brian. Yeah, and so I think um, you know as as we work with more and more pipeline teams, the focus with Qualitest on quality, which is really the key point we're making today and the way to think about this. Uh, I counsel a lot of security professionals to say, hey, doves care about quality, so does management in the business. Think about what you're doing in security as a function of quality, bring security in with your functional testing, bring your security testing in with your functional strategy, bring your security strategy in. And that's really a great way to get the faster cycles that people are looking for and the better quality. And between our two organizations, we've got everything you need. We're the all-in-one with the tools and the, and the training. They're the all-in-one with the staffing augmentation and the strategy and bringing that all together really helps make organizations successful as we have done. Would you like to tell us about a quick case study about one of your customers? Sure. So, you know, uh, we have, uh, you know, some success stories to share here. And uh, from healthcare to finance, uh, you know, we have uh, proven expertise in implementing DevSecOps and not just mobile DevSecOps. You know, I'm also talking about web DevSecOps. Uh, you know, as a service across business domains. And uh, the problem statement typically, you know, from each of the customers are pretty similar in a sense that uh, all of them uh, want consistency in their cybersecurity processes. They lack uh, cybersecurity systems and they have major, major reliance on pen testing, if at all, you know, I mean, uh, uh, they have some place for uh, security testing as a, as a practice. So, you know, we work with our clients to build a strong cybersecurity testing plan that would uh, accommodate cybersecurity test code automation, code inspection, manual execution of the security test cases. We help them identify and correct security flaws, compliance gaps, and uh, risk with our uh, shift left approach and integrated DevSecOps tools. And the result, it's a reusable, reliable security framework that can actually flex to customers' changing demands and is scalable. And it and its application cuts across different value streams for a particular organization. So I think you have a few references for folks, maybe some more resources they can learn more uh, after today's event. Right. So we got these free resources available out there for uh, you know uh, for people to consume. And um, as I said, you know, we are a we are a digital, we are a, we are a QA organization, we are an AI-led QA organization. So right from you know our digital engineering processes to automation to security performance testing, I mean, you got resources pertaining to each of these different service categories. So you have you know uh, uh, you have white papers, you have webinars. You know, the recording of webinars are also available on our website. And uh, here are some of those links that perhaps you can refer to. Very good. We always like to provide continuous learning, right, for people from these sessions, because we know this is a journey that folks are going through. Um, I think I'll talk a little bit about Caribou Coffee. We can tell a variety of different stories here, but I think Caribou Coffee is a great example of, a, of an organization that, um, you know, competes with the likes of Starbucks and Pete's and the other ones you may know, um, but they're very much kind of a family boutique coffee shop. And when COVID hit, um, they were their mobile app was not transactional. Their mobile app was like, find your local Caribou Coffee, what's on today, you know, that kind of thing. And so they had to move very quickly into a transactional app, which meant new risks to the business. And they proactively realized that they wanted to have better security protocols in place as they started adding in the ability to remotely order and pick up curbside and so on and so forth. 
And they were remotely developing yet needed to move faster because they had been on side of a semi-annual release cycle. So we helped them move from quarterly to monthly to even faster release cycles, collapsing their release times while ensuring they had the security built in to protect their customers. You know, they now have coupons. They now have transactions. We can buy coffee through the app and get food delivered and all those kinds of things. And that's all about proactively building out a mobile app sec program that fits the risk profile of their business. And so we're excited to work with organizations, whether they're mature like banks or less mature like Caribou Coffee, helping you get there where you want to be. Couple of links for you here. Um, if you're a GitHub shop, there's 85 million developers in the world. Um, we partner with GitHub to create the first uh, mobile security action in GitHub Actions. Have a look at that. That's security scanning in your repo. Uh, we talked today about Now Secure Academy briefly. It's a ton of free training. Feel free to just jump in there, academy.nowsecure.com. Sign up for your own account and you can begin the learning process. There's courseware for dev, for QA, for security teams, for architects, uh, please enjoy. And if you're looking at some strategies for building out a mobile tool chain, we've got a guide there for you as well that you can leverage. So with that, we're going to go to q and I'll remind you that the Q&A tab is open. I've got the Q&A tab here on my phone. So I'll be looking at that as well in the background. And so our first question is for Akshay. Uh, how and where do you start with a mobile DevSecOps journey, typically when you work with a customer? Okay. That's a, that's a good question. And uh, so uh, how and where do you start DevSecOps? So, you know, you you first got to define your goals. I mean, and that's with any 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 given, you know, uh, uh, when you're trying to implement a new solution offering or, you know, even in your DevSecOps journey, you first got to decide and define your goals. So, you know, you, you got to, I mean, if you've got a, a, a DevOps pipeline already in place, you got to look at whether it's, you know, it's Jenkins, the kind of different integrations that you can bring into your Jenkins pipeline or whether it's AWS or Azure DevOps server or even Bamboo for that matter, right? So you, uh, again, as part of your goal defining process, you got to see whether you need an integration of a, you know, tool like Jira with the uh, various tools used in the entire uh, uh, product development life cycle. you got to, Again, decide whether you want to remove manual build and deploy process, whether you actually want to employ, uh, you know, uh, embed security into uh, the DevOps pipeline and, and what all different uh, tools and what all different security practices you want to embed, whether, you know, you're only looking at SAS and SCA or you also want uh, you to automate your DAST and IST as well. So you got to implement, uh, you know, efficient, continuous and automated and secure development and deployment process. So, you know, right from, as I said, you know, as I, as I, uh, you know, during the webinar also, as I said, right from the developer trying to write secure code to the pre-build and post-build uh, uh, and, and the post-build phase and, and then the, you know, data moving into production. So you, you can embed security at each and every step of the SDLC cycle. Again, it's, it'll be driven by your, uh, you know, your necessity and uh, your release cycles and uh, how uh, frequently you release codes and you, you know, you push them to production. So that would again, depend on. So again, you have to strike that right balance between uh, development uh, quality and security. So, you know, you can go with the basics like the SAST, SCA, and DAST, and later you can also move to compliance as code, infrastructure as code, and then you can incorporate a vulnerability management tool as part of your uh, entire SDLC also. But these are the three, uh, you know, the, the bare minimum, SAST, SCA, and DAST, uh, you know, and as I said, security baked into your SDLC, it has to be the way forward. So, uh, you know, I would, uh, these would be uh, my three best bet static application security testing tools, SCA tools, and dynamic application security testing tools. It's good. It's funny you brought up dynamic because there's a question here. DAST is typically manual. How do you automate? I'll go ahead and take that since we do that. So the way Now Secure works actually is we do SAST, DAST, uh, IAST, uh, which is interactive application security testing along with API security. The way we actually do it is we literally have rigs that are in data centers and so we direct an app, load, download it on a device, and then there's remote control software that actually drives the application on the device. And so there's basically a, a man in the machine style. Uh, the system automatically drives the application. You can allow it to do best guess. You can script it. You can do a guided test, which has our human interact with the app to make sure it covers certain parts of the app. So um, traditional DAST is either manual or complicated. It's often done through a pen test. Uh, we've had an automated DAS now for about a decade. That's one of the better ones in the market that gives really full breadth of coverage from a DAS perspective. Um, there's an interesting pair of questions here. I'll, I'll, I'll give them to you. So 
does shifting left and eliminate the need of pen testing altogether? And related question is you can't automate a pen test. So how would you how would you answer that one, Akshay? Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's a that's an interesting question. Uh, does shifting left? No, it it doesn't. You know, I mean, shift left and shift right both are important. And uh, you know, shifting left does not mean what you're trying to do is. I mean, security used to be an afterthought, right? So now you're just trying to bake it as part of your SDLC so that you know you have uh, you know less issues being moved to production. So it does not eliminate the need of penetration testing. Of course, you know, penetration testers uh it, it it provides an uh, an added layer of defense wherein you know uh all the bugs because sas you can't expect just sas SE, and dast alone to find out all the vulnerabilities uh that your application you know might uh possess and uh so penetration testers you know bring a different set of experience altogether wherein they would use the the same technologies the same tools as would a malicious hacker and then they are you know not just looking at the code they are they are taking uh you know they're taking a stab at it from a black box perspective so of course uh, shifting left does not mean of course it would reduce uh, their effort in the sense that they would not be able to identify as many uh, you know issues as they would traditionally and that's that's even better for organizations you know who have who are investing in both shift left and shift right so i i'd say that it has to be a fair balance of shift left and shift right and uh, shifting left does not eliminate the need of uh, you know, penetration testing or into into your later stages of SDLC. Again, it in in a way, penetration testing completes your DevSecOps journey. So just by shifting left does not mean that you you know you you can only incorporate uh, SAS, SCA, DAS, and ISC. Penetration testing is but an integral part of your uh, DevSecOps paradigm. Automate everything you can. Use pen testing for that which you can't. And that's right. really the strategy I think we're talking about today. And we're up at the top of the time, so I'm going to go ahead and wind us down. I want to thank everybody for participating today and for the questions you asked. For those questions that we weren't able to answer, we'll get back to you online. As I mentioned earlier, we will be uh, sending you a replay, which is a copy of the video. You get links to the slides, links to all the resources that we talked about as well. If you had any questions you asked and we didn't get a chance to answer, we'll respond to you as well because we know who asked the questions. And we look forward to seeing you next month in our next DevSecOps Bunch webinar. We love having this annual, uh, excuse me, this monthly activity. Want to thank Qualitest and Akshay for joining us today. Please have a look at Qualitest in your organization. If you need the help, please have a look at Now Secure if you need the tooling and automation as well. And we wish you the best on your mobile DevSecOps journey. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.